By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to create high converting image ad creatives in literally less than 15 minutes using ChatGPT. And this is exactly what I do to help brands scale from six to multiple seven figures per month. And over the last six years, I've generated over $100 million in advertising revenue profitably for e-commerce brands. Help this brand go from 70K a month to 900K a month. This one from 96K to 842K a month and the list goes on. So I've generated, again, over $100 million in advertising revenue doing this stuff, and I make videos like these to give you the information to be able to do this yourself. So without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into the video. Now, in terms of how to actually do this, making good creatives, regardless of the format, regardless of whether or not you use AI, always begins with the research. So linked beneath in the description of this video is gonna be a sheet that I call the eight-figure creative engine. And realistically, what this is is basically just a way to collate all of the information that we need to give ChatGPT in order to turn it from a bot into a S tier creative strategist. So essentially what you see here is you're gonna start by first including your product name. Now I have chosen a drop shipping product literally just for the purposes of example. So all you need to do is replace all this information with your product. The copy that you get below in the description will have this blank template. First step is to just put your product. So you can do an Amazon listing, your Shopify listing. The next step is to do a link to either your Amazon reviews or if you have a review app on Shopify, do a CSV export and basically dump at least 300 reviews into here. If you don't have 300, that's fine. Just know that the more reviews you do, the more data-driven the insights that you pull from you know, ChatGPT and the better your creative. Next, we're gonna do a link to five YouTube videos either on your product itself if you're large enough and you have reviews from creators or five videos that people are likely to watch if they're in the consideration phase, or in other words, if they're thinking about buying your product and they haven't yet bought your product, because those are valuable insights. And when we're advertising, we are not advertising to people who have purchased the product. We're trying to convince people who haven't made yet, who haven't yet made that purchase. So we use these YouTube videos and even the Reddit forums, as well as the TikToks to try and get into the psychology and to give that information to ChatGPT of what the psychology of someone who is in the purchasing phase, in the consideration phase, who hasn't yet made a purchase, um, what that looks like and what types of things are they looking out for from our product? What types of things do they value? What pain points are they trying to escape? What things are they factoring into their decision that leads them to ultimately make a purchase? So you're gonna find five YouTube videos that are on topics related to things that people who are just about to make a purchase are going to search. So in this case, I've done like, uh, because I'm doing a laser hair removal device for this example, I've chosen uh, basically like a review video uh, basically comparing all the different devices. I've chosen one that basically shows someone's results because I think people who are in this market are definitely gonna wanna see if the product actually works and the list goes on. Then you're gonna repeat that process with Reddit forums. So Reddit is a great place for research. It's probably one of the best uh, places for customer research because it's so widely available. So even if you don't have videos on your product available on YouTube, there are definitely gonna be Reddit forums either on your product or other products from your competitors or just in your general niche that you can use. And all of this information, we are then going to feed into ChatGPT as well. And then we repeat that process by collecting five TikTok videos, either again, on our product specifically or reviewing slash um, talking about the different things uh, about the product, basically from your customer's perspective. Okay, once you have all that information into the sheet, we're then going to begin the process to actually pulling it into ChatGPT. Very simple process. So within the sheet that's linked below, you are going to be able to grab three prompts. The first of which is just gonna be a prompt that feeds the research to ChatGPT. The next is gonna be grabbing information into a couple of key categories, which we'll get into in a second. And then lastly is gonna be creating some audience personas, or in other words, people that, or frameworks of different types of consumers in your total addressable market that you can have in the back of your mind as you're making creative. So you know you're creating one specific type of creative for one specific type of customer avatar. So let's go ahead and do this really quick with ChatGPT. So these prompts are meant to be as plug and play as possible. So you just come in here, grab that, dump it into ChatGPT, go like that. And all I'm gonna do is include a uh, what the product title is, a link to the product URL, the product description, and then I'm also gonna include the reviews as a PDF, as well as the comments and Reddit forms. Okay, cool, so I've just gone ahead and finished adding in everything that I said that I was going to that's in the basically the uh, placeholder of the prompt itself. So I've added in the product title, which I just pulled from Amazon. Then I pulled a link to the product. Product description is also from Amazon itself. And then scrolling down, added in some reviews as a PDF. So here's an export of all the reviews. 
and then I copy pasted in a bunch of YouTube comments from all those videos and then all as many of the Reddit forums as I could into here as well. Then we're going to go ahead and press enter on that. Allow ChatGPT to do its thing. Okay, cool. Then after we've fed in the first prompt along with all of the research uh, documents as well, next we are going to copy paste the second prompt. And what this is gonna do is generate all of the most critical information in a few key categories. And those categories are gonna be the main unique value propositions of your product, the mass desires fulfilled by your product, the benefits of your product, the features, the pain points, purchase prompts, desired outcomes, failed solutions, and customer objections. And all this information is gonna get extrapolated from the reviews as you'll see here in a second. So we can see based on the reviews, based on people who are actually buying this product, what are value propositions that people are enjoying from the product? What are the desires that people have um, that they're fulfilling by buying this product? What are the main benefits that stick out to them? What are the features that stick out to them? Like for example, this product specifically is a laser hair removal device. Um, and there are thousands of those on the market, but this one specifically has ice cooling technology. And we know that would we probably be fair to assume that that's a unique selling proposition of the product. But in this instance, we can see that it's not just a gimmick. People actually do value the ice cooling technology as a real feature that they benefit from as opposed to just like some sort of gimmick feature. And as you can see, the pain points get generated, the purchase prompts, or in other words, what's causing people to purchase in the first place, the desired outcomes, um, failed solutions. So things that they've tried in the past, as you can see, one of them is actually other uh, competitor products. And then customer objections, basically things that people are hesitating on purchasing from. And all of this information is um, information that you'd have to manually extrapolate without using AI. And not only would you have to manually do it, but what's great with ChatGPT is you'll notice here in pretty much every single category, there is this numerical number. <laughs> There's this number here that basically tells you how many times that particular answer has shown up in the reviews. So not only are you getting access to all you know five unique value propositions, you're also seeing in which order do they actually occur the most frequently? So you can see which ones are standing out the most. So I know that this is the biggest value proposition based on the reviews. This is the biggest benefit that people experience. This is the most important feature that people enjoy about the product, which is why it's so critical that you really supply ChatGPT with as many reviews as possible, even going so far as to take reviews from your competitor products, because if you do that, then that's gonna make all of the information that we pull using this prompt that much more data-driven, and that's gonna give you much more confidence to actually take these insights and then turn them into actual ad creatives. So once you're done with this step here, you're going to then craft the actual audience personas themselves, okay? So let's grab this, go back to ChatGPT, paste that in just like so, and let it fire away. And it's gonna come away with three, or three to four audience personas and what's great with the personas is that it's more so gonna focus on psychographic information. So in other words, what is the psychology of this person? What are their behaviors? What are their deepest wants, needs, and desires? As opposed to like, you know, your traditional sort of demographic information, like, you know, female makes, you know, X amount of income per month, lives in this city, things like that. You're gonna get some of that stuff at the surface level, but it's really focusing more so on uh, psychographic profiles, which is a lot more useful to you in creative strategy. If you know someone has tried shaving and DIY hair removal hacks in the past, and you, if you compare that to how useful would it be to know like this person makes you know X amount of income, sort of the traditional uh, demographic, uh, demographic stuff in personas. So once you have all of that information, you can basically collapse this below. And the final step is to translate this into what we call an audience one sheet. So an audience one sheet is basically where we're gonna house all this information. You wanna pull it out of ChatGPT, especially just in case, you know, who knows what's gonna happen to your ChatGPT account. And uh, we have this sheet in here, which is basically the one sheet in personas, where we're gonna copy paste all that information into um, a sheet that we can store. And if you have other team members, this is gonna be where you refer all of your team members who are gonna work on the creative for you. Uh, you'll refer them to the sheet to be able to get up to speed on the brand and the product as quickly as possible. And then they can always constantly reference back to this uh, to be able to create creative ongoing. So as you can see, we have a section here that basically has the answers to each of the categories. And then we also have the reviews that ChatGPT is pulling as well. So if we go back up, you're gonna see specific instances of reviews to support whatever answer or the corresponding answer. And this is helpful for two reasons. Obviously, number one, ChatGPT can sometimes make things up if you're not careful. So it helps us see that ChatGPT isn't really making anything up. It's actually pulling 
or it has evidence to support why it's saying this answer. And then another thing too is when you see the way in which your customers describe benefits, features, or just things about your product in general, they're going to be using specific keywords, specific jargon, specific language that is unique to the customers in that audience. And if you're a marketer, or especially if you are marketing for a product that is outside of your niche, or if you're a founder that you know founded this really awesome company, but you're not really like in the demographic, like I think about Obvi, um, huge women's supplement brand that's founded by like three dudes, um, it's going to be difficult to actually get into the language that your customers are using because you don't naturally fall into the niche. So the reviews are great for that and seeing how people actually describe their problems um, to you um, and how they kind of speak about the problems in their niche. Okay, cool. Then really quick to actually start generating creatives because we essentially completed eight hours of product research and like the time it took to record this video, like 10 minutes. Um, so we've got about five minutes here and the rest of the five minutes we're gonna use basically turning all of this information into creatives. So I'm gonna show you how to do that using a very simple prompt. I'm gonna jump over to one of my uh, SOPs here and we're gonna start with a static testimonial because this is one of the easiest creatives to make and it's also one of the most powerful creatives to make as well. I've had image ad creatives with testimonials and very basic headlines scale accounts from $1,000 a month to $70,000 a month. So do not underestimate the power of a static testimonial. And what I love about these is because they're statics, they're obviously incredibly easy to create and iterate off of. So you can make a bunch in a very short amount of time. Um, I have a second prompt here that's basically going to allow you to, um, from the reviews, start to generate headlines within that same chat. Okay, so I'm back inside of ChatGPT and I've just pasted in this review, uh, or well, this little prompt here, which basically just says, look through the reviews and find me a, a really solid headline. So we're gonna press submit here. Okay, awesome. And as you can see, we've already got 10 Facebook ad headlines. And some of these obviously are you know, not the best, but I would say the majority of them are things that I would actually run. Say goodbye to waxing pain forever. No more expensive laser hair appointments, this does it all. I really like this one. I know this less hair in four weeks. And what's great with ChatGPT is if there's any point where I wanna refine this even further, it's so, so simple. So let's say, I'll say repeat the same thing. This time, focusing on the most important or most frequent value proposition and most prominent uh, pain point, okay? So now I'm gonna be focusing on, if we go back, the most prominent value proposition, which is painless hair removal, and then the most prominent pain point, which is uh, frequent shaving and hair regrowth cycles. So um, as you can see, these are all focused. Now I can sort of tailor and refine everything down to match the answers that I have to all of these different categories. So if I know my competitors are going really, really hard on one specific value proposition and they're much larger than me, they're spending way more than me, it might not make sense to compete with them on the value proposition of painless hair removal with ice cooling technology. They're already kind of going after that. But let's say that they're not doing as much to try and speak to affordable and cost effective uh, or affordable affordability as a, an angle, right? So that market or people who do value that, as we can see, there's 12 mention of, of that in the reviews. There are people that are potentially not getting served those creatives. And that's a massive gap in the market that you can fulfill by testing with these images. So if we go back, as you can see, I just refined this down even further to focus on the most frequent value proposition and the most prominent pain point. And now I have different headlines that I can easily use on top of an image to create a very simple static to but effective static testimonial. So pretty much all of these are worth testing. Some of them are a little bit long. You can even say like, sometimes I really don't like when ChatGPT does that. So I'll say, don't use the dash format. And let's see what it does. Awesome. So now, as you can see, we've gotten some more, a little bit more organic slash conversational sounding headlines. I like this one, enjoy weeks of smooth skin without the hassle, the pain-free solution for lasting hair reduction. But you can even go one step further if you are an advanced uh, founder and you know your marketing, then I asked it to basically embellish these further since we're in a stage four level of sophistication. And then I said, as you can see, some of these headlines were freaking awesome. And I would definitely use these in the ad copy. Uh, breakthrough device that gives you weeks of smooth, flawless skin without a single wince. Finally, a solution that combines ice cooling comfort with salon grade results. Um, I like this one, redefining hair removal with painless precision and lasting results. And then this fifth one here is one of my favorites, painless, effortless, and designed to leave you hair free for good. That just sums up the entire at-home laser hair removal market. And then I told it was a little bit too long to make them a little bit shorter so we can fit them on an image. And as you can see, it had no problem condensing these down 
um, into shorter headlines. Um, effortless hair removal, that truly works. Um, revolutionary results without the pain. Finally, painless precision for all skin types, long lasting hair removal, no discomfort. And literally in a matter of 15 minutes, you can easily add these onto a Canva project and start pumping out 15 different tests, all testing out the same angle with 15 different ways of saying it. Or you could generate five headlines. Uh, you know, let's say you wanted to really test, do your customers respond better to more positive speak? So speaking to like value propositions, benefits, um, and desired outcomes, or does your customer base respond better to pain? So talking about pain points, failed solutions, objections, things like that. And within each of these, you have five potential angles for every single category that within each of those, you're gonna have an individual answer or five individual answers. And each of those individual answers, you can test multiple different phrasings, multiple different headlines, and multiple different testimonials. And to do this for a static testimonial, you're gonna just put the headline in quotations, but you can also do a static headline with benefits as well. And here are a couple examples of how you can turn everything that we've just done in the last 15 minutes into images. All right, and that is gonna do it for this video. I think I lit, went a little bit over time. Now, if you want access to this sheet, it's gonna be linked in the description below and we just walked through exactly how to use it. So within 15 minutes, you should be able to do the research or collect all the information, do the research, generate your audience one sheet and then actually start generating headlines and copy for the image ad creatives. And then creating images literally takes like less than a few minutes. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you got a ton of value at it, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Liking and subscribing really helps with growing the channel. So I do appreciate all of the love and feedback um, that you're able to give. If you want me to have you Sorry. If you are a Shopify brand that's currently looking to scale in 2025 and you want to make the jump from six and you want to make the jump from multi five or low six figures a month to seven figures a month and you want to have me run your ads for you, then hit the first link in the description. Then check out the first link in the description to book a call. Otherwise, I hope you got a ton of value out of this and wherever you are in the world, enjoy the rest of your day and I will catch you in the next video.